everyone, Jeannie here and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. So today I'm gonna to be talking about my month two keto update. So if you guys are not following me on Instagram, you definitely should follow me there because I update you guys a lot on my weight loss journey over on Instagram. So the past almost two and a half months, I've actually been under Nicole Burgess's reign. I've been under her wing. So she has taken me on as a keto coach client and I am here to tell you guys what has happened in month two. So I'll with you guys my first update in the middle of April. So this is going to be my update for May. So we're currently in the first part of June. So look out for my month three update next month. So I'm gonna go ahead and just share with you guys the month I had in the month of May. So when I started my keto journey, I weighed in at 184 pounds and currently today I am 167 pounds. So let me go ahead and get out my calculator. So 184, 167. So that's 17 pounds. I've lost 17 pounds since roughly the beginning of March, I think is when I started this, I think like middle March, something like that. So I have lost 17 pounds, which is huge. But let me tell you guys, the scale is not something I'm actually concerned about right now. What I'm concerned about is how I'm feeling. What I'm concerned about is setting goals for myself, meeting those goals. And number one, my goal for myself for this second month on keto is I wanted to get myself uncomfortable. I wanted to push my limits in terms of my running. I wanted to challenge myself by limiting my coffee intake from Starbucks. And I also wanted to try new foods. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in to some tips and tricks on how you guys can make it through your first two months of keto. If you guys are similar to me, I've tried all sorts of different diet plans to where I've done really good for two weeks and then something happens, the weekend hits and all heck breaks loose and then I'm completely off track and then I lose the weight that I had lost. So let me just tell you guys something really important and really key when it comes to the keto diet in my opinion. The ketogenic lifestyle, you want to stay within 20 net carbs to stay in ketosis, but that doesn't mean that you can be eating 2,000, 3,000 calories in bacon and butter and heavy cream and cheese. If your caloric intake for the day is still not, if you are still not meeting your deficit in terms of your caloric intake, for weight loss, you're not going to lose any weight. So that was a mistake on my part when I first even attempted the keto diet is two years this coming October. And I thought to myself, I'm like, what the heck? Like I thought that this keto diet was going to make me lose weight, but it ended up making me gain weight. And what I realized was I wasn't properly tracking my food. I wasn't tracking my calories. And that is huge because it's basic, it's basic math. You guys, it's calories in versus calories out. So if you are exceeding your caloric intake for the day and you're not having a surplus then you're not going to lose weight, but the 20 net carbs is really crucial if you want to stay in that ketosis phase and burn the fat through ketosis. So I want you guys just to know that because that was a huge mistake I made when I first started the um, ketogenic diet is I was eating tons of calories staying in the 20 net carbs, but I was eating a lot of calories, so I wasn't seeing the scale move. You wanna make sure you are tracking your food and the easiest app you can download, it's a free app, it's called Carb Manager. So you go ahead and input your macros of what you're supposed to be doing. So I'm supposed to have 20 net carbs a day, I'm supposed to have 95 grams of fat, 77 grams of protein, and 1,245 calories. Now, Nicole Burgess, she made my personal macros. So she is a keto coach now. So if you want to, um, you know, look in further to some of her services, then stay tuned. Um, and she'll be updating you guys on other services that she's offering. But she does my macros and tells me what I should eat, what I should stay in range. So, um, and then I'm able to add in my exercising as well. So if I run for 30 minutes, I plug that into my carb manager and it'll tell me like my overall 
caloric intake for the day. So if you are someone, if you wanna eat a little bit more on your working out days, then I go ahead and do it. If you're hungry, go ahead and do it. But if you're looking for a more significant weight loss, I would say don't eat the calories that you're burning if that makes any sense. But there is a scanner at the upper right-hand corner and you can actually scan the barcodes of items and then it plugs it in. And also uh, there are community um, additions as well. So if there's a food that's not there from a barcode, then other people have plugged the macros in and you can go ahead and just choose it from there. So my carb manager saves me a lot. And something else that you want to make sure you are doing is weighing your food out because you would be surprised at how like your eyes see more than the actual measurements. I challenge you guys to blindly do like a half cup of some things and see what the actual measurement is with the actual measuring cup because I guarantee you, well, I'm not gonna say guarantee, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys will probably do more than a half cup without realizing it. So portioning out your food by measuring it. I, I find that weighing your food is the most accurate, especially since a lot of packages will say half a cup or 28 grams. And I have found that when I am weighing out my Lolly's granola, if I do it in a one fourth cup measurement in the cup, my measurement is always heav heavier inside of the measuring cup versus the scale. So the scale gives me the most accurate number when it comes to weighing out my food. So I weigh my food out every single time I'm pre pre so I weigh my food out every single time I'm preparing my food because it's the most accurate number and I track everything. So um, just a tip, if you are starting out, get yourself on the Carb Manager app and get yourself a food scale. Okay, so now I'm gonna be talking about how I pushed myself out of my comfort zone in the month of May. So I wanted to get myself running more consistently. So I would find myself making excuses in terms of why I didn't run that day or why I didn't run that day. And then it would just be a trend and then I would go five days and not run at all. So what I started doing was I started saying, okay, I'm gonna run a mile every single day for 30 days. Now I stayed pretty good during that time. I don't have my notebook here, but what I did is I made a 30 day calendar and then I have a little stamp right here and I would stamp next to every day that I made my running. So I was able to see that grow and it was so, it was great to see the progress I had made from the start to the finish and actually, you know, stay along the running schedule that I had set out for myself. And I think I missed a total of maybe like two days or three days out of that 30 day period, but the consistency in my running was really good. So I'm really proud of myself for sticking to my running schedule. Something else that I had challenged myself to do during that time was to not get Starbucks. So I used to get Starbucks every single day. It was something that I needed to have. Like I felt like I needed to have it every day. And uh, I went a solid 18 days straight <laughs> without getting Starbucks. And then Mother's Day came and I said, hey, Nicole, can I get a Mother's Day Starbucks? And honestly, me getting that Mother's Day Starbucks is what started the downfall of that. So I got more Starbucks the following weekend and the following weekend. So I really didn't stick, stick to the, um, the whole 30 days without Starbucks, but I made it a whole 18 days without Starbucks. And for me, that is un heard of. So um, I definitely got myself out of the comfort zone in terms of not getting Starbucks every single day. But I will tell you guys this, it did allow me to kind of do an experiment with my body to see if Starbucks would help my diet or if it would um, hurt my diet. And I was successfully able to get into the 160s. So I think that limiting the Starbucks the way I did really had significant numbers when it came to the scale and seeing more results. Because with Starbucks, if you put in heavy cream in your order, you don't really know the measurement of heavy cream you're getting. So you may be getting a lot more heavy cream than you realize you're getting. So I'm gonna continue to work on my Starbucks and try not to get it as frequently as I have gotten it in the past. So something else I've done this past month in pushing myself with the keto diet is I've been trying new foods. So 
I am someone who hates fish. I am not a fish eater. And the day that Nicole put on my meal plan fish, I was so incredibly nervous. I actually made a whole entire vlog out of this sharing with you guys me eating fish because this was a huge thing. Like I messaged my best friend about it. My husband was like, what, you're gonna eat fish? My brother said, whoa, I love the, the new side of you, Gina. And my dad, he didn't believe it. He wanted to see it on video of me actually eating fish. So uh, Nicole put fish on my menu plan and we were kind of wanting to do this to see if it would all help the scale at all. And after that week of eating fish is when I had a significant drop and that's what got me into the 160s. So um, we tried salmon, we tried cod, and we tried shrimp. Now, something that was a mistake on my part is I made uh, the Southern Keto uh, fish fry with the cod plus shrimp all in the same meal. So I basically just had shrimp and cod on my plate. So I didn't have a side or anything like that. So I think I overwhelmed myself for the first time eating fish. Well, I've eaten fish before, but the first time actually like preparing it and everything. Um, so I would, I think that, but I think I did wrong this first go around with the fish meal that I prepared at my home is I put two fish items on the same plate and then had this expectation I had to eat it all. So I think that was my mistake I made. Um, I will say that I did prefer the um, broiled salmon over the cod and the shrimp because I was able to kind of mask the taste of the salmon a little bit more with a bunch of lemon pepper and butter. But then I discovered I can eat my salmon or my salmon patties I make. I can just put it in a sandwich form with a smart bun or I can um, make shrimp tacos out of... Um, lettuce or I can do the whole like cheese shell. So I think for me being a non-fish eater, I think it needs to be paired with other things. So with like fish tacos, you could pair it with a little pico de gallo. You could put some avocado, squeeze some lime, um, hot sauce, the cheese. So it's not all just fish, if that makes any sense. So if you're someone like me who's squeamish with fish, don't eat it by itself because you probably won't like it just like me. And it's kind of a mental thing. Like if you are not eating a specific thing for a long time, for whatever reason, a lot of times it's a mental thing. Now I wanna talk about a mistake I made throughout my last month. So I think my biggest mistake I made was eating Smart Sweets, Quest Cookies and Bars, and peanut butter. So what I found with the Quest Cookies and the Bars is they were good. They were actually overly sweet to where it made me crave even more. And the same thing happened with the Smart Sweets. So it might very well be an ingredient that's in the Smart Sweets and the Quest that are making me more hungry. So I was eating um, two good yogurts for breakfast and a uh, Quest bar in the morning. And then I was having a Quest cookie at night. And let me be honest with you guys, the Quest cookies don't even taste that good. Like the, it has that really strong aftertaste of the uh, what other um, sugar substitute is in there, like you can taste it. It's the same aftertaste I get with the Zevia sodas. It's a taste that I particularly don't like. However, the Quest vanilla shakes don't have that weird aftertaste. The Quest vanilla shakes taste straight up like a liquid vanilla milkshake. Like those are amazing. If you haven't tried the Quest vanilla shakes, Holy smokes, you need to go, stop what you're doing, go to Target, do a pickup order and get these. They are so freaking good. But oddly enough, I didn't like it paired with the coffee. I don't know, I'm weird. I'm weird with my taste. Like I don't like mayonnaise, I don't like fish, I don't like, oh gosh, there's tons of things that I don't like. And I just have weird taste buds. I think I just have weird taste buds. We're just gonna throw it out there. And something else I didn't like was the Halo Top ice cream. Now I liked the banana cream pie flavor because I liked the taste of banana, which is something I was missing because I don't eat bananas, but I hated the white chocolate. It like the texture of it was not even ice cream. Like I don't even know what I was eating. It was like the texture of like mashed potatoes. I don't know. It was so weird. I didn't like it at all, but I loved the flavor combo of the banana cream pie. So Rebel, if you're listening, Enlighten, if you're listening, you guys need to make the same banana cream pie flavor because it was by far my favorite.
So something else that has been key on this ketogenic lifestyle and this weight loss journey of mine is meal planning and meal prepping. So I am under Nicole's wing and she sends me a meal plan every single week. So she lays out what I'm supposed to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. She gives me approved snacks of what I'm supposed to be having for snack and I follow that meal plan. And what I love about her meal plans is that she makes is a lot of times she'll use the same protein and there's repeat meals. So I'm able to do leftovers and whatnot. So it's a little bit more easier for me to do. Uh, but I find that meal prepping my breakfast and lunch specifically, like prepping the protein ahead of time, uh, like broiling salmon ahead of time, um, making the meat for like my taco bowls, um, doing my bacon and sausage ahead of time and prepping the hard boiled eggs saves a lot of time because breakfast and lunch are my go-to grab and go meals um, to where I don't have a whole lot of time to prep. So I like to prep my breakfast and lunch, but for dinner, I like to prep my dinner fresh. So I will not do meal prep for my dinners unless I'm doing like a big pot of soup or something that's gonna last me like two or three meals. Um, so I like to prep my dinners fresh. That eating out can be a little scary when you're on a ketogenic lifestyle or you're trying to eat low carb or you're trying to watch what you're eating. And I just have a few tips for you guys um, in mastering eating out. So for me, if I'm gonna eat out, and I usually get the choice of where we go out to eat or where we pick out takeout food. And more times than not, I always opt for something that's more like Mexican style because I can do steak fajitas with some sour cream, guacamole, cheese, and I'm good to go, a little fajita veggies. Um, or I'll opt for a steakhouse so I can just get a steak with like a side of broccoli or another steamed vegetable. Avoiding the breads, avoiding the chips. So during this quarantine time with takeout, it's been really easy because you don't have a basket of chips right in front of you or you don't have bread right in front of you. Um, another go-to thing to order would be like a Cobb salad. That's always a really nice choice as well. But when you're eating out, um, you just gotta be careful of sauces. Ask if you are if you don't know if something has like hidden sugar in it. Specifically, dressings you need to be really careful about. I remember when I had uh, gestational diabetes, I would um, go to different restaurants with my family, and I would order something, but then I would also ask, "Hey, do you have sugar in it?" And a lot of the salad dressings had sugar in it, so then I had to change um, what I was eating. Uh, so it's always important to ask. Um, if the server doesn't know, then the um, prep cook, cook should know um, the ingredients because that is super important for restaurants to know the ingredients in the menu items that they are serving. So don't feel like you're a hassle to ask, hey, is there sugar in this? Ask before you order. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get into my workout routine for you guys. So I am a runner. It's what I love to do. I don't like to do like hit workouts. I don't like to do spinning. I don't like to do yoga. Um, I like to run. It is my outlet. It is my therapy for the day. And you guys, once you start running, the endorphins are amazing. It's, it's like... It's free therapy is what I tell people all the time. It's the best mood stabilizer. I just cannot talk enough about the benefits of running. So when I first started running in the middle of April is when I really started to get cracked down on my running. I was barely running a mile. And Tuesday, no, Monday, I ran five miles. Last Thursday, I ran five miles. And I've continually, gradually gotten myself up to five miles. So if I can start from zero to five in less than two months, like you guys can do it too. So I actually have a really fun video coming out with a friend that I've recently met here on YouTube and Instagram. So um, I'm gonna be sharing some running tips in that video. So I'm not gonna go too much into detail. Um, and the app I use for running is just called Running. It's very simple. Um, they have different workouts you can do. They have a running coach that tells you when to walk, tells you when to um, speed up, when to slow down, when to cool down, the warm up. They also have like a list of, they also have a music library and I just really enjoy that running app. Um, so yeah, I've used a lot of running apps in the past and this one by far is my favorite. And if you're running for weight loss, they actually have an eight week program. 
um, that tells you how many times to run, how far to run and whatnot. So if you're looking for running as your exercise, definitely check that app out. So something else I do is I get out and walk with my kids. So we are home all day and you guys do not skip on your kids getting outside and moving because you know, they're not meant to stay inside all day and just sit and watch TV and sit in front of their tablets. They need to be moving, they need to be out. So we go on a walk every single day. We walk about a mile together every single day. I bring some snacks for them at the halfway point. We sit at a bench, we have some snacks, and then we have a sports park um, behind us. And I just let them run amok on the baseball field. So they'll run up and down the hills, they'll roll down the hills, they'll do so much just to stay active. In turn, I'm staying active because I'm having to walk with them as well. And our neighborhood is very hilly. So there's uphill, downhill, and I think I get some extra like calories burned when I'm pushing up my 31 pound toddler. So I think when I'm pushing up the boy up the hill, then I'm getting some bonus calories as well. Now I have to go ahead and talk about some of my favorite keto products that have helped me through this first two and a half months of this journey. So the first thing I mentioned to you guys is very basic. It is just a food scale. So I think I got this at Target. This is from the Taylor brand, I don't know. Uh, but definitely do not skip on getting a food scale. So I'll have a link to everything I mentioned below for you guys to make it easy if you guys are just shopping online. So the next thing that I have been loving, loving is the Lolly's Cookie Cluster Granolas, you guys. This stuff is so good. The only flavor I didn't like was the lemon flavor, but I've really enjoyed the cinnamon pecan and I've really enjoyed the chocolate peanut butter one. And I will sprinkle this on my yogurt. I'll eat it just by itself. And last week I actually made a cheesecake crust out of it and it was so easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link below to them. And I love supporting small business. So definitely go and check out their granola cook. So definitely go and check out their granola clusters if you are wanting some sort of sweet treat or you don't like to eat yogurt by itself, I would highly recommend. The thing that I was forced to do during my hiatus of Starbucks was make my own iced coffee. So I mentioned this to you guys before, it is the Starbucks cold brew coffee kit and I actually have a cold brew coffee pitcher as well. It's from the Bodum brand. Um, so I have this cold brew maker and then I actually got my own syrup from Starbucks. So this is the sugar-free vanilla syrup. Now I know that there's an ingredient in here that is not good. I think it's called circlose, I think is what it's called. It's not good for you, um, but I love this. So I'd rather have a little bit of that ingredient than me fall off the wagon and go and get like a caramel frappuccino. I think that this is better for me than a caramel frappuccino. This keeps me away from caramel frappuccinos. So I think having, you know, a tablespoon twice a day is okay. So it's one gram of carbohydrate for two tablespoons. So I can't not have this in my life. This is something that I will not give up. So I make my own um, iced coffees. I have a tumbler. You can get tumblers online. You can get tumblers at Walmart. They make tumblers everywhere. So. Um, doing your own at home iced coffees is definitely one, a money saver, and it's going to save you on the calories because you know what is going in your coffee because you're doing all the measurements. So the next thing is a seasoning. So my favorite seasoning has been the Trader Joe's Chili Lime Seasoning Blend. If you guys do not have a Trader Joe's, I am so sorry, but this is the best thing that I use to season um, any type of like chicken fajita or beef fajita. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this on shrimp the next time I make it. I love the blend of the chili lime seasoning and you could probably even make this yourself. It just has sea salt, chili pepper, red bell pepper, lime juice powder, citric acid, rice concentrate, I don't know. You could try to do your own blend. I'm sure that there are different hacks on Pinterest if you wanna just go ahead and make your own blend. The next staple of mine, the Southern Keto Cookbook. This is by Natasha Newton. I've talked about this, raved about this. Nicole actually got this for, for me for my birthday last year. And it is a well-loved cookbook. Like, just look at this, look. Sausage and gravy, yes, like comfort food. This is my go-to book for comfort food for basically anything. And I actually made 
um, the cheesecake from this, um, I made the cheesecake from this recipe right here. I just uh, made the crust a little bit different. And speaking of meal plans, here's my printed meal plan from last week. So I just print it and it makes it super easy so I know what I'm doing. So thanks Nicole for that. Um, so yeah, that's how I made the um, crust with the Lolly's granola clusters. It was, I did a cup of uh, almond flour. I substituted the raw pecan halves for the Lolly's granola clusters, one fourth cup of butter, and a half cup of erythritol. So that's how I made the crust, and it turned out amazing. So, I, oh god, I cannot, I cannot even explain to you what was going through my mind when I was eating that cheesecake because it was so, so good. Talk about something that I didn't like and I don't enjoy. One, I already told you guys, it was the Halo Top ice cream, the keto collection. I didn't like it, but I did like the banana flavor because that was really good because I was missing banana, but I didn't like the texture of the white chocolate. Something else I didn't like was the high key cookies and brownie bites. So they did send these to me. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I didn't like them. Um, I thought for um, the price of them and the serving size, I think it's a little high. You could just make your own you know, keto cookies at home. You, there's a good recipe for some peanut butter cookies in the Southern Keto Cookbook. There's a good recipe for um, butter cookies in the Southern Keto Cookbook. So I think for the price tag for those, I just wouldn't recommend the high key, but I did enjoy their granola. So the high key granola, this is the maple pecan flavor. I prefer the high key granola on my yogurt versus the lollies. I'm using lollies right now because I ran out of my high key, but if I had to choose between high key and lollies, I would go high key for yogurt. But I would pick lollies for eating right out of the bag, putting it on ice cream or eating it just by itself because it is that good. Oh, I feel like I have just been talking forever about this keto update. And I just want to let you guys know if I can do this, you can do this. I am someone, I have the biggest sweet tooth. I just, I love food, I love to eat. And this diet, this lifestyle has definitely changed the way I'm eating. It has changed the way my family is eating. And overall, this is going to be so beneficial to us. So I am just staying the course and I can't wait for the outcome of month three. So currently right now, things may change just a little bit because my husband and I at this point, we're actually trying to conceive right now. So um, there is a likelihood that maybe next um, update I might be pregnant or a few months I might be pregnant, but that's okay because I still plan to follow this ketogenic lifestyle even if I do become pregnant because I had gestational diabetes last time. So um, that puts me at risk of getting it again and just overall, if I am blessed enough to become pregnant again, I wanna make sure that I am staying healthy and taking care of myself and managing my weight a little bit more and keeping up my running and everything. If I become pregnant next month, that's not gonna be a pass that I don't get to run for another 10 months from that point. Like I'm gonna be that lady out there running at nine months pregnant, running four miles. So that is my goal. If I am if I'm blessed to get pregnant again, I wanna be that super pregnant lady outside running. <laughs> that's gonna be me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and Scarlett's making a fort. I think yeah. is what she's doing. I hope you guys have a fantastic Thursday. Make sure you like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel, comment below anything you would like, and I will talk to you guys all later. So I just wanna give a big thank you to Nicole Burgess. So if you guys are um, not familiar, she is a keto coach now. She did recently just get her license, um, and she's not accepting clients at the moment because she already um, accept accepted a few clients already. Um, but she has some other services that she's going to be rolling out um, in the future. But she has a great community on Facebook, a free community on Facebook. It is her um, keto Facebook page, which I'll leave linked below. Check her out on Instagram, her YouTube channel. She shares a lot of free content on um, how to get you started with this ketogenic lifestyle. So thanks again, Nicole. Air hug. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.